Okay, can somebody confirm you can hear me? Can yes, you? we can hear you. Thank you. Let's close that down. Problem with Microsoft again. All right, I'm recording. Let me share my screen. Before we begin, are there any questions? All right. <clears throat> I think I'm sharing my screen. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, see, I've got problems with the uh, Microsoft, so I'll have to try and sort that out later or take it into... Uh, Clark IT department to get that sorted. Mm, let's see. Um, this is microbiology 260 at Clark College. Is there anyone here who is not registered for the course? Um, I'm not. I'm on the wait list. Okay. The wait list has now disappeared, so I need to know your name just a minute let me write that down come on oh i got it here never mind all right who was speaking i didn't see the screen oops that doesn't uh, christy Dunn. say again christy Dunn. uh christy Dunn? Uh, Christy Doan. Christy Doan. Yeah. You spell that with a C or a K? Uh, K R I S T I. S T I. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's Doan. D O A N. Okay, got it. Thank you. All right. I'll uh, let's see. Where do I want this to go? I'll try and see if I can add you. I may not be able to know until Thursday, but I will do my best to add you. Uh, if there's room, we will add you. And like I said, I don't know. Uh, actually, I might not be able to add you until Friday because that's when I will uh, remove anyone who's registered and is, is a no-show. All right, what we're gonna to do today is I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the technology session, a little bit about the syllabus, some tips for success. We'll do a lot of vocabulary in the entire term. Uh, some today, not that much today, but much more in the term. And then we'll eventually get to chapter one, the microbial world and you. And that will include a part of chapter 10, classification of microorganisms. Uh, in chapter 10, we're only going to cover page 264 to 272. In the current edition of the uh, textbook, which is made for Clark College, I don't know if it's the same page numbers in the full edition of the textbook. Any questions about what we're going to do in the lecture today? In the lab... We will do a lab, but that'll be later on today, and we'll do lab 00, the lab on safety training. I hear people are still adding the class, so um, if you have any questions once you've logged in, please ask. Anyways, that's what we're going to talk about today. Let me go briefly to the web page and show you. 
you should see a link with actually this neat picture, uh, biology 268749, uh, F for fault, uh, 2023. And then click on it, you'll get this page, which is our main Canvas web page. On this page, I have some general course information. You scroll down, avoiding the plagiarism tutorial and the quiz. You need to take the quiz by this Saturday. I'll come back to that. And then when you scroll down, uh, week one for lecture, I've got the um, links here by week and uh, by lecture and lab. So if you scroll down further, there'll be week one lab. And then you scroll down further, week two lecture, week two lab. And it just repeats this way. Hopefully you won't have any trouble with my organization. At the very top, we have some uh, important course information, like I've got a note for you to read. Uh, there's the syllabus, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. Uh, if you ever have trouble with uh, your computer or the network, uh, try this link here, student and technical help. Uh, you can let me know that you're having difficulty and, uh, but I won't really be able to help you. And so you need to contact the uh, um, computer help desk. And there's a way to uh, put in the, uh, let's say the IT department, the, what does IT stand for? Something like technology. I don't know what the I stands for, but, uh, uh, and then to put in a ticket to request something there's different types of technical help. You got a link on that page. And then for all other help, non-technical, use this link. And then some student help for other things like the Canvas Student Guide, Table of Contents, the Tech Hub, and then Smart Penguin, Twitter e-learning support. Just some notes about Clark College, student services, student tutoring and services, including e-tutoring. Let me go there to make sure that still works because they sent out a recent link. Yeah, that does work. Uh, the Language and the Writing Center and then Financial Aid Career Services, Office of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, Pinkwin Pantry, Veterans Resource Center, Counseling and Health Center. So a bunch of help links. And I've got most of these on the syllabus as well and links to them. Something you might do to modify your Canvas site so you'll get all notifications from me. Uh, my YouTube site, if you do not attend the live Zoom session, that's not a problem. You can view it later on my YouTube website. And I don't obviously have anything there from this term. Uh, whenever you go outside of Canvas, you'll get this thing. Firefox can't open this page. But look at the link there and then click that. And then it'll open it outside of Canvas, which you need to. And this has uh, some uh, of my uh, classes from a previous term, uh, three weeks ago, one month ago. I don't know why that's there. Hopefully, uh, you won't need to look at the older uh, uh, links, but if ever I am not able to record the lesson and then paste it to my YouTube webpage, I'll let you know and I'll try and give you a older uh, lesson that'll cover the same material. Let's close that down. Well, and for some reason, Zoom no longer works at... Uh,
at the convict ca canvas webpage. And I don't know why that's the case. I guess I should ask someone who knows. I don't remember receiving a notice about that. Well, wait a minute, let me check that out. I've looked for that earlier. See, there's no meetings in here. Um, I don't know if this page will work for you, but it's definitely not working for me. And uh, so I need to go directly to Zoom and then log in. And that may delay me because if I forget and then go through the trouble of logging into the Canvas website and then discover I can't log into Zoom, I might be a little bit late in the class. And you'll notice that my clock here is a little bit slow. And this is a problem with this laptop that I got from uh, Clark College. And there's a problem with its clock and it consistently runs slow. And I just had it set up, meaning they redid the clock about, oh, probably three months ago, maybe even less. And it's already, well, at least two minutes slow. It was three minutes slow a little while ago, but two to three minutes slow. And so I'll probably be starting the class a few minutes late until I at least get the clock set up. I cannot change the clock. You have to have an administrator password and they're not going to give that to me. And so I need to take it into uh, Clark College. And then there's another problem with this laptop. It will not download the new installments to Zoom, even though I've asked for it to do it automatically and uh, put it in there to do it. It will not do that. And so I have to take it in about every three months to get the installments to Zoom put on this computer, the, the updates to Zoom. And so I just have to do it at the same time. And I'm afraid it's time that I need to go do that. So um, that's why the clock's going to be a little bit late until I get it sent in to, to Clark College. Um, let's see. There's a new note about Zoom and the Zoom invite, which I emailed to you. Uh, some YouTube videos. I have them as links in the class, but you can go here if you wanted to see them all together. Um, Biosafety information for students and physicians. This really won't be a problem for you because we're going to do everything online. So you're not going to be exposed to microorganisms. Uh, actually, let me go here. Uh, the lockdown browser requirements. Oops, that's not what I want to do, but it tells you about the lockdown browser requirements. And uh, you will need to get lockdown browser installed on your computer. I'm not going to open that. And this is a, a note telling you how to do that and where to go to do that. To take all of the quizzes, except for the finals uh, part A, which is, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, short answer and essay questions. Uh, all of the quizzes will require you to have lockdown browser on your computer. So you must get it downloaded on your computer and ready to run before you take the quizzes. I don't see a link to lockdown browser here. Every term, I've got to go to a lockdown browser and, oh, there it is. State that I want to use it, which I think is a nuisance because it's the same thing. I just have to go here. Your settings have been updated. If I don't do that, you can't take the quizzes, which is a really odd feature for them to have. Uh, if you don't get lockdown browser to work on your system, and usually I only have one student every other term who does not get it to work when they download it on their computer. You need to contact the computer help desk in advance to get it running. 
what you'll need to do is change some settings or maybe just one setting on your computer so that Lockdown Browser will work. I've only had one student who never got Lockdown Browser to ever work on their computer. And to tell you the truth, I wasn't um, satisfied that she actually did what uh, the computer help desk told her to do in changing the settings. So I'm not sure that she never got it to work. But uh, I've only had one student, like I said, who ever never got it to work. Those students who need to change your settings, I won't be able to help you. So ask the computer help desk. They're experts at getting Lockdown Browser to work on your system. And another problem with this is that students who have a trouble getting to, to download and work on their system always wait until the end, in which case they may not have time to contact the computer help desk and time for them to change the setting on your computer. And if you try to take the exam more than two days late, the answers will show, and you cannot take the exam after the answers show. So you want to get the lockdown browser downloaded and running on your computer soon. And I do suggest students take the practice quiz. For one thing, you'll get extra credit point. It'll be a practice on my quiz questions. And uh, you will make sure that lockdown browser is running on your system before you uh, take the quiz. Any question about any of that? All right. There is a link for the first three chapters of the textbook and all the chapter summaries. So if you don't have the textbook yet, you can get it here. It's only the first three chapters here and then the chapter summaries to all the other chapters for the custom edition of the textbook made for Clark College. All right, I mentioned you need to take the plagiarism quiz that needs to be taken by this Saturday. And if I show you the schedule, it's right there. You must take the online plagiarism quiz by 11.59 p.m. Saturday, September 30th. You must achieve 100% on the plagiarism quiz. If you do not achieve 100% or you do not take the quiz, then on the Infectious Disease Research Project, instead of getting a possible 100 points, you'll get a possible zero points. So you must achieve 100% or you'll get zero on the Infectious Disease Research Project. Any question about any of that? So there's the plagiarism tutorial. And it must be finished by September 30th. Once you take the plagiarism tutorial, you'll be allowed access to the plagiarism quiz. You will be able to take this quiz at least five times. I think I've got it set for higher than that. Yeah, you can get seven attempts. And it's the same question. So if you miss a question, you can just choose another answer. Now, I think the, uh, the answers will shuffle. So you can't just always say A and then go on to B because A may change to B. But um, my point is you can take this quiz multiple times, but you must get it done by 11.59 p.m. this Saturday. Any question about any of that? This quiz itself will be worth 20 points. Oh yeah, there it is there, shuffle the answers. But it's the same questions. All right, so that's one of your first assignments. This is the major one. There will be a few other assignments. There's going to be two assignments in the lab, which we'll talk about that when we have the lab, but 
Uh, there will be two assignments for lab 00 and lab 01. And then there will be a worksheet for uh, chapter one, which will be due uh, this Saturday. L the worksheet for lab 00 is actually due uh, Friday. Where do I have that? Oops. Probably down here in the lab. Yeah, right there. The worksheet for Lab 00 is due September 29th, I think at 8 a.m. Due 8 a.m. If you do not get the worksheet for Lab 00 in on time, I will, on Friday, drop you from the class. So make sure you get worksheet for Lab 00 in by 8 a.m. Uh, Friday, September 29th. And this is the only time I'm going to check this to see who's attending the class. And anyone who's not attending the class, I'm going to drop you. Any question about any of that? All right. Um, there's a few things up for uh, week one lecture. I've got an overview and objectives for chapter one. An overview is what we're studying. And then the objectives are the objectives for this chapter. All of the quiz questions, as well as all of the final questions, will come from the objectives. So the best thing to do to study for an exam is go through the objectives and make sure you can answer them. For some of the uh, later chapters, I have it as a uh, One number three. I have it only as a study guide, and the objectives will be at the top of the study guide. Come on, show. Hmm. It's supposed to show in here. Oh, there it is. Page didn't load all the way. So at the top. Of the study guide, we have the chapter three objectives. And as you scroll down, there will be notes. The notes will cover the same material I'm going to lecture on, but it'll be in a different format. The notes will be in well, outline form, which actually this is showing it here. And for uh, chapter one, I've got it separated into the overview and objectives. Oops, that's chapter two. And then the study guide. So I've got it broken down into two links. Eventually, my goal is to do this for all of the study guides, but I don't have it that way. So maybe what I should do until I got it that way is link these together. The worksheet for lecture one, that's not due until this Saturday. Uh, there's a few extra credit assignments up. Uh, this one is due this Saturday, the extra credit study sheet. Let me go ahead and open that one. And then an extra credit picture that's due in two weeks. The extra credit picture is just send me a picture of your face. I'm going to put it in my grade book. No one will ever see it except for me. And it's just a little picture. You don't need to send it little, but uh, I'll just put it in the grade book as a little picture. And then I, I will use your picture. It's the best thing I've found for helping me learn your names. I'm not good about learning names, but if I'm going into the grade book and adding my grades and see your smiling face next to where I'm adding the grades, that's a good way for me to learn your names. And so that's why I'm giving you extra credit 
on that. That's going to be three extra credit points. If you don't have a digital picture or you can't stand, scan a photograph, just ask somebody who has a phone with a camera, which I think all digital, uh, modern phones have them. What do they call that? Uh, smartphones or whatnot. Um, just ask them to take a picture and then email it to you and then they you can uh, upload it to this website. You'll have a link here for uploading. I don't have that link. I've got a link for speed grading, for grading. Um, let's go to the study sheet. The study sheet is uh, I'm going to ask you to put in your daily log, meaning what you're doing a day, and then on another, let me open that. On another tab, put in the study schedule you're going to make for, why isn't that working? All right, let me stop my share. I'm having trouble getting this to work. Uh, hmm. Still not working. Let's just download it. Now I got to share my screen again. Somebody's using the chat feature. I don't see that when I'm sharing my screen, so I do not use the chat feature. I think I sent that out as a uh, message. So if you have a question, please ask, because I'm not going to see uh, your uh, chat messages. So on the first log, put your daily schedule, what you do during the day. If you don't want to put detailed information, just put something like family time, working, okay? But you should have a daily schedule. I compare that with log one, which is the worksheet to your, your time studying in this class for week one. If it's the same for all other weeks, just state that. So let's say you're going to be studying from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., or microbiology 260, put that in there. And then I'll compare that with your uh, study schedule and make sure you can actually do it. I've only once had a student put that they were working and she had that she was studying. And I said, how in the world can you study while you're at work? And she said, well, usually at work, she has some downtime and that she actually did do the studying at work. And it was fine with her employer that she did that. So uh, uh, normally I, I would question that, but uh, usually people would not be working on the same time they're studying. So they'll be working on Tuesday morning and maybe studying on Monday morning. And then I'll look at that and make sure it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, I'll ask you before you get the credit. Uh, if you have a different study time you're going to be studying in week one versus week two, put week one on log one, put week two on log two, put week three on log three. And if you need to add more tabs, go ahead and just add more tabs. I've never had anyone add more than three tabs, but uh, four tabs. But if you need more, you can always add more. And then I will give you extra credit. You get three points if the uh, log one is filled out for your time studying in the class. You'll also get three points for uh, your daily activities. You must list, meaning essentially fill in your day. You can't have large numbers of blank schedule like Saturday and Sunday. If you leave it blank, you're not going to get full credit. Okay, so you need to tell me what the heck you're doing. And like I said, you don't have to be specific. You can put like Saturday, all day, family time, assuming that's what you're planning to do. Okay, any question about any of that? And uh, 
Why is that message there? Three points for your daily schedule, three points for your study schedule. If something isn't clear, you'll get at least a minus one penalty. So make sure you're putting study time for uh, uh, the class or make it clear that you're studying for the class. If you have multiple classes you're studying for, I don't need to know about the other classes or the other time you're studying for other classes. And I'm not going to criticize uh, you, but if I feel you're not studying enough for this class, I will warn you that most students will need to study more time for this class in order to succeed. And that's all you'll get. I'm not going to mark you down for that. Uh, I will just say that you might want to take the class at a time where you can spend more time studying, or you should probably spend more time studying. But uh, that's it. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and leave that for the lab. And there's a note. You should take the Play G quiz this week. Any question about the lab website? Um, I was wondering if we could run down the syllabus just because I'm not in the class yet. And I just wanted to see. I'm going to cover the syllabus. That's the next topic. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me save this down. I'm not sure I did that. There we go. Anyone else who's trying to add the class, please let me know. If you're not attending, I will not add you. So, um, all right, close that down. Let's go over the syllabus. Uh, Christy, you should have me email you the syllabus, by the way. Okay. All right. So, uh, this tells you about the class, the credits. And you notice the credits is for the lecture, not for the lab, but actually in Canvas, you'll get the grade in the lab. So the lab is more important for the way Clark College is set up. And I think in your report card, it'll give the uh, grade under the lab class. And that's why 8749 is before 8750. And then when we're meeting at Zoom, uh, I do have a uh, a uh, Clark email, but I actually prefer you to email the Canvas email site. I'll check this at least every other day, the Canvas email site. This email site at Clark, I get a lot of junk mail at this one. And so I'm only going to check it about two times per week. So if you want a quick response, please email me in Canvas. I do have an office. However, um, I'm not going to be going to Clark College much this term because I'm teaching online and only online. Information about the textbook, materials, and other resources. Uh, there's only one text which is required for this book, and that's an introduction to microbiology by Totora, Funk, and Case. And you can get that information here. There are some optional texts. I'll let you read about that. You should read about Canvas and other resources available to you. You let you read about the course description and the student course outcomes, policies, and suggestions. If you're sick, contact me and I'll try and keep you on track in the online class. If you're sick and you're not feeling up to attending the Zoom session, you can always view it later online. But uh, try to contact me prior to any due dates to make arrangements for late work. Preparation for class, consult the tentative lecture and lab schedule that's shown at the bottom of this syllabus. This class will be very busy. We'll go over a lot of 
material. It's best if you read the material before the lecture and before the lab. However, as long as you get it read before the quiz, that is all that is uh, essential. And you should all obviously review the material before the exams. Uh, attendance and participation, other than the first week where you must turn in uh, worksheet for lab 00 by Friday at 8 a.m., I'm not really going to be taking attendance. That uh, doesn't mean I can't find out who's been attending the class or uh, uh, viewing the online lectures. I uh, have had a class where less than half of the students were even viewing the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, online videos, meaning the recordings, and only one or two students were attending the Zoom session. And then students were complaining that they're struggling in the class. And my answer was, well, if you're not attending the class, you're not viewing the uh, Zoom sessions, the recordings, uh, how do you expect to pass the class? So I can find that out is all my point. But generally, I'm not going to be checking who's attending the class and who's participating. But you must send the assignments by the due date. Only Lab 00 will get you kicked out if you don't have it in by the due date. But otherwise, you won't be able to submit the assignment in Canvas. That doesn't mean you can't send it late. You may always email it to me, but uh, there's a late penalty if an assignment is sent late. And let me go ahead and talk about the late penalty now. The late penalty is 25% a penalty the first day it's late. Thereafter, it's a 50% penalty. So make sure you get your assignments in by the due date. Any question about any of that? I'll let you read about wearing masks. Student responsibilities, you should read the assignments and the handouts, bring them to class or the lab. Know the due dates of assignments. They're on Canvas. They're on the Canvas calendar. And you can, I think in the grade book, you can see the due date also. And most of the assignments are listed in the syllabus. We'll talk a little bit more about that. The labs have two dates, two due date dates, excuse me, for the lab. I consider the lab a training exercise. So it's a learning exercise for you guys. And that means the first time it's due, I will tell you which questions you got wrong or which question you got partially wrong. And uh, you then will have at least a week, well, about a week, uh, to submit corrections for full credit. Now, Canvas isn't set up to have two due dates. So what I'm going to do in the lab is the first due date will have the regular due date. And then the second due date will have the until date. Any questions about that? And you may submit an assignment until the until date is passed in which case you can't submit it anymore at Canvas. You'd have to email it to me late. So in the lab, you may send it in twice. I'll tell you which questions are wrong, and then you can resubmit it for full credit. Any question about any of that? As far as I know, I'm the only instructor who does that at Clark. But like I said, this is an online lab and I consider the labs a learning exercise. If you miss a class, it is your responsibility to find out what you have missed. 
you should keep all papers until the final grade is given. That way, if ever there's a question, we can go back and uh, figure it out. You must abide by the student code of conduct, especially as it applies to academic honesty. Cheating, plagiarism, and the like are not allowed in college. Uh, laboratory safety rules must be followed, but for you guys, this is just going to be a verbal discussion because we're not ever going to go into a microbiology lab. All interactions, including student to student, student to instructor, and instructor to student should be cordial, business-like, and professional. This includes all communications and emails. Everything should be phrased and positive, non-confrontational and non-offensive language. We all must be respectful, even if we strongly disagree. I will try to respond to all Canvas emails within 48 hours. Uh, Clark EDU emails, I'll try to respond within a half a week, meaning if you send me to the Clark email, I'm not going to try to respond quickly. I'm not going to check that email more than twice a week. I'll try to have all assignments graded within a week of the due date. Note that big assignments, and there are two in this class, will take additional time. And that's because it generally takes me a week to grade the big assignments, meaning each student, it will take me close to a half an hour to grade a big assignment. And that's a lot of time. So those will not be graded within a week. And that's uh, the infectious disease project and the laboratory report. The labs are graded, going to be graded two times. I will get the first grading within a week of the due date. In fact, I'll try and get it graded within a few days of the due date. So that way you'll have close to a week to uh, make corrections. The second grading, I'm not going to promise when I will get it graded. I will get the second grading of the lab done whenever I have time. And it may be fairly late. Any questions about any of that? And the reason for that is I'm always going to give first priority to the first grading of the lab. And so the uh, second grading of the first lab will be at the same time as the first grading of the first lab. And I'm going to give priority, no, the first grading of the second lab. Sorry, I didn't say that right. Uh, I'm always going to give priority to the first grading. Now, the good news is I will give you a temporary score, so you shouldn't be confused about what your grade is in the class. It's just that it probably will get better. Course withdrawal, I'll let you read about that. Events sometimes make it possible for a student to withdraw the course. If you're thinking about withdrawing the course, you should make up your mind this week, because if you withdraw within the first week, and I don't know if that's Friday or Saturday, you can get a 100% refund. So try and make up your mind by this week if you want to continue this course and try to stick with it. Because after this week, if you withdraw, you're going to have to pay for the class. But if you drop this week, you will not have to pay for the class. I already talked about late assignments, student conduct. You should know about your rights and what's acceptable. Plagiarism and cheating is not allowed in college. If I find that you are plagiarizing or cheating, you and any student that you cheated from or uh, plagiarized from will receive a zero on that assignment. Any question about that? All right. Uh, plagiarism, by the way, is using three or more consecutive words from somebody else 
and you don't put it in quotes and then state where you got it from. So if you get together with a study buddy and then you're working on an assignment and you say, that's a really good answer you got there. I want to use it. You make sure you change it in your own words. Otherwise, it is plagiarizing or put it in quotes and then state who you got it from. Any question about that? And on the infectious disease project, I once had a student who turned in over 50% of the assignment where it was in quotes. And then she stated where she got the quoted information from. And I decided that was way too much quoting. So anyone who ever does that will be penalized because the person isn't really thinking. They're just quoting from somebody else. And so um, don't do that. I've only had one student who ever did that, but don't do that. Okay. You should always try to put things in your own words, but if you can't, then put it in quotes and just make sure it's less than 10% of your paper and then state where you got it from. I'll let you read about etiquette for Zoom. College-wide student information, translational services. I don't even remember what that's about. Suggested study methods. Like most science classes, microbiology is going to be challenging because it introduces new vocabulary, many new concepts, and you'll have several assignments done due at the same time. Students will feel stressed, especially in the middle of the term. This is actually normal for this class. This is a difficult class. But many students will say that this is one of their most enjoyable classes. To alleviate some of the stress, please understand the commitment you are about to undertake to take this class. To be successful, you must set aside sufficient study time. Although sufficient is an individual matter for most students, most students will need to study an average of two hours for each hour they spend in class. And that's either in Zoom or on the, the uh, uh, looking at the recording lady. Our class normally requires about three hours of lecture and four hours of lab each week. So seven hours total in class time per week. Therefore, to expect to study about 14 hours outside of class, plus the seven hours inside a class each week. If you do not have time for this class, it may be wiser for you to take it during another quarter when you have the time to take this class. I'll let you read about uh, comprehending fundamental principles. And then uh, finding out what type of a learner you are by going to the www.varklearn.com, English, whatever, this link here. I don't know why that's not a link that you can click on. Let me see if I put a... Yep, it's not going there. I don't know why that's not becoming a link. Here are some suggestions which will help you uh, study, uh, take on manageable ch small chunks of material. If you uh, study just constantly, you're going to find it counterproductive. Unless you're a genius, you won't remember if you're doing all your studying at one time. Um, for the material. Use concept mapping. Be organized. We're going to have several concurrent assignments. And without proper organization, you may, may feel lost. Use 10 to 15 minutes before class to scan both the previous class notes that you've written and those for the upcoming class. This will help you remember where we left off and get you in the proper mindset for class. 
come to class. That sounds simple, but many instructors, including yours, have noticed, noted a strong correlation between attendance and grades. Obviously, the quizzes will be on material covered in the lecture or in the lab. And then listen in class. It sounds stupid, but if you turn off uh, what you're listening to, either because you're spending so much time writing and concentrating on the writing or doing something else while you're in class, uh, you're not going to be remembering much of what is being discussed. What you want to do is take notes because the best way for students to learn is from their own notes. If I were to give you my own notes, uh, your learning would be 50% less than if you take your own notes. Uh, take sketchy notes at first and then go over your notes within a day as soon as possible is the best to do and then add to your notes. You need to go over your notes within a day because after a day, after 24 hours, short-term memory will disappear and then you will not be able to add to your notes. Uh, another reason for taking notes is that if you take notes, you learn twice as much if you just list, simply listen. If you were to simply listen to the material, you'll only learn, or simply read the material, you'll only learn 10% of that material. If you take notes, you will actually learn 20% of the material. Now, the reason is because you're listening, you're using one part of your brain to listen, and then you're writing, so the information is moving from one part of your brain to another part to write, and so that doubles your retention of the material. Now, 20% is not a whole lot of the material that you've learned. But if you think about it, you actually know this. And that is when somebody is first trying to play a piece that they never played before, or an Olympic athlete is trying to learn a new skill, what do you call it, activity, whatever, how many times do they have to repeat it before they learn how to do it? Does anybody know? Nobody's going to take a guess. You can't just learn it by practicing one time or listening to it one time or going over your notes one time. And they've actually studied this quite a lot on middle school students. I don't know why all the studies use middle school students. But to learn the material, you need to go over it 20 times. Now, you're an adult. If you really want to learn this material, you do not need to go over it 20 times, but you must want to really learn the material and put the effort in. But even so, you must go over the material something like 10 times. If you listen, that's one time. You take notes, that's the second time. So that means you have to go over the notes eight additional times before you will learn close to 100% of the material. And yes, that's a lot of work, I know. And obviously, if you're not that interested in learning the material, you'll need to go over the material closer to 20 times. Try active learning strategies like forming a study group online. I'll actually give you extra credit in week two, not this week, uh, if you do form a study group. You should quiz each other in your study group. And then you can write up mock exam questions. And then one of the best ways to learn is actually to teach. And then vi use visual study aids. All right, let's talk a little bit about the grading. A plagiarism quiz, I've already told you, is worth 20 points. There will be five quizzes this term 
at 75 points each, but you can drop your lowest quiz. So that's four at 75 or 300 points total on quizzes. If you miss a quiz, you may make it up if you contact me by email within 24 hours of the quiz and explain the situation. However, you must make up the quiz within uh, two or three days of the quiz because you cannot make up the quiz once the online quiz answers have shown. And all of the quizzes require Respondus Lockdown Browser with the exception of uh, the essay questions and final quiz A. The worksheets for the lab will be one for lab for a total of 50 points. I think that includes the, uh, oh, what is that called? The uh, unknown notes pages, which are also worth five points, uh, which is part of the lab. Uh, the lecture worksheets will be one per lecture for a total of 25 points. Where the heck do I get a five out of that? I'll have to look that up. Uh, you will be completing worksheets uh, about one per lecture, about one every week. Occasionally for some assignments like chapter eight, you're turning in two uh, worksheets per week or two, two worksheets per chapter, I should say. Uh, the worksheet and the lecture, at least uh, uh, the first grading of the lab worksheets are going to be due that week that we cover the material. The identification of the unknown bacteria, that's the lab report that's worth 75 points. The infectious disease project is also worth 100 points and that's a lab project. The cumulative final exam is worth 150 points. We'll talk more about that uh, when the time comes. Uh, it'll be broken into two parts. Most of the questions will be uh, using Respondus Lockdown Browser where there'll be multiple choice, but there will be a few short answer and essay questions which will not be using Lockdown Browser. So the total points, 20 for the plagiarism quiz, 300 for the quizzes, 50 for the lab assignments, like the lab worksheets, uh, the unknown project, 75 points, the infectious disease project, 100 points, the lecture worksheets, 25 points, the final, 150 points for a total of 720 points. That's not in counting the extra credit points, there will be about 20 extra credit points uh, this term. So the grading scale is a little different than the canvas grading scale. If you get over nine, excuse me, 92%, you'll get an A. Over 90%, it is a A minus. Over 88%, it's a B plus. Over 82%, a B over 80% a B minus, over 78% a C plus. Anything over 70% is a C, we don't give C minuses, and we don't give a D plus or a D minus either. Anything over 60% is a D, anything under 60% is an F. Uh, like I said, note the canvas does give a grade. Its grading schedule is a little different than ours. And so the grade that it shows may not be correct, especially if you're uh, close to the borderline. Like I think to get an A in Canvas, you have to be 93% or higher. I'll let you read about question review and written corrections. Read about the microscope use, support services for students. I'll let you read about that. Other services for students, I'll let you read about that. Enrollment due dates and deadlines, click this link. Hopefully that works.
Let me go there to make sure. Well, that doesn't look good. Oh, for heaven's sakes. All right. Uh, I'm not sure if this is just Microsoft Edge, which is causing the problem, or if it's... Uh... My... What is that? Let's try that one more time directly. Doesn't look like that's working. Yep, that might not work. Um, I'll look into that. Let me can make a note of that. I'll let you read about one-stop assistant, reasonable accommodations, use of camera, college-wide information, translational services, non-discrimination policy, school emergency procedures. Uh, at the end of this term, we will be in the winter, in which case Clark may be closed. My... Uh, uh, solution is we're all going to be doing this online, so I will be running the class even though Clark is closed. Safety information for students and physicians. I'll talk a little bit more about that in the lab. Words of advice and comfort. Sometimes it may seem like your instructors are your enemies. It is true that we must maintain standards so that we cannot always accommodate you. However, you should know that we want you all to succeed and that one of the greatest joys of teaching is interacting with our students, getting to know you and helping you achieve your academic goals. So if you have any problems, complaints or concerns, come and discuss them with us or me. Uh, the earlier, the better. Don't let them fester. Festering only makes matters worse. And also, uh, I understand that there may be stress levels, and I'll try and keep that in mind uh, when we're running with this class. Uh, so if you have a problem, please contact me, okay? Lab safety rules, I'll go over that in the lab. And then the tentative course schedule is on the bottom of this uh, syllabus. Understand that it may change. If it does change, I'll update the syllabus and make an announcement so that you can know that the uh, schedule has changed. But on the schedule, it has what we're going to be doing and uh, this week, and then what's due. Uh, like next week, it's telling you on Wednesday, the practice quiz zero zero is due. It does not stay. Scroll down here. Although it might stay for that one. 
no. It does not state there, but it does state at the bottom here, if I can find it. Uh, most, if not all, lectures and labs have a worksheet that is due Saturday at 11.59 p.m. of the week of the lesson. Uh, these due dates are not shown on the schedule. Any question about any of that? All right. Uh, I can make a note that I put in no class on Thursday, November the 9th, because of Veterans Day. Veterans Day is actually uh, the Friday, the November 10th, but uh, I decided to build that into the schedule because, for one thing, uh, we always meet more days, fall term, than any other term. And I think it's two more days. And I'm, and that will just make the schedule a little more normal. Last term, we actually had Veterans Day uh, when we were teaching, so it must have fell on a Thursday. Which isn't last term. I guess it was last year. All right, any questions about what we're doing? If not, let's go on to lesson one. Don't have much time left. Got it up here. Microbiology 260, chapter one and chapter 10. Uh, usually on the first slide, I have a slide giving you the major goals and a rough outline. Know the terms, what's a microbe, a microorganism, a germ, a pathogenic organism, a parasitic organism, a microbiota, Infectious disease, emerging infectious disease, pasteurization, and Cox postulates. Now understand these terms are only the major terms. To learn all of the terms, you really need to go over the objectives. Uh, we'll also talk about a brief history of microbiology and the importance of microbes. For the importance of microbes, here I'm showing you the nitrogen cycle where, let's see if I can blow this up. That didn't help. There we go. Or we can say nitrogen starts in the air, in the atmosphere. It can be fixed by bacteria and archaea into an organic compound. Most of those organic compounds will decompose when the a uh, living organism dies and will de be, de be decomposed by bacteria, archaea, and fungi into ammonia and ammonium. A few of the organic compounds can uh, be uh, um, released and then uptake by plants, but very little will be that way. And then some of them can also be uh, decomposed by uh, uh, into nitrate but not much of that. Most of it will go into ammonia or ammonium. And then that can uh, be dissolved in the water and taken up by plants and algae. Plants and algae can use ammonia, but they don't like it. And if they get too much ammonia, it'll actually uh, make the plant become discolored and eventually will kill the plant. But the ammonia can be broken down into nitrite by bacteria and archaea, and nitrite can be broken down into nitrate by bacteria. And then the nitrate is the form of nitrogen the green plants and algae love. If you ever look at plant fertilizer, one of the main ingredients is nitrate. And then the plants can decompose, in which case, uh, most of them will be uh, decomposed into organic compounds, which will then be decomposed further. Uh, my mouse died. Decomposed into organic compounds and then decomposed further into uh, the ammonia and ammonium. Anyways, the nitrate can be converted by bacteria and archaea back to nitrogen in the atmosphere. And now we've finished the nitrogen cycle.
And this slide here is showing you wherever we have a red arrow, this step of the nitrogen cycle and all steps with the red arrow is happening because a microbe is performing this step of the nitrogen cycle. For So the reason why nitrogen is cycling in the Earth's ecosystem is because of microbes. And if you did not have microbes, nitrogen would not uh, recycle on the planet Earth. It would all end up in one place, probably when uh, living things died, they would all not be decomposed and then there'll just be this dead thing on the ground and uh, that would be locking up the nitrogen. Any questions about any of that? Well, the point is that uh, microbes are extremely important in the functioning of the nitrogen cycle and without nitrogen cycle, uh, life could not continue on the planet Earth. Uh, plant, uh, microbes are also important for the making of soil. Microbes can actually obtain, or at least some microbes, can obtain nutrients from rock. And when they do that, they break down the rocks, leading to the formation of soil. Now, microbes are not the main way that soil is made. Most soil is made by erosion, either from the wind or the water. But microbes do make a significant portion of the soil, a minor portion, but a significant portion. So once again, microbes are very important for the planet Earth. Any question about any of that? Microbes are also important in the uh, level of oxygen on the planet Earth. If we look at the history of the planet Earth, you'll note that early in the history of the Earth's history, almost 2 billion years, there was 0% oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere. And then about 2.7 to 1.8 billion years ago, the oxygen first appeared in the atmosphere at about 1 to 5% of today's present level. That rise in oxygen happened uh, to give rise to the evolution of plants. And then the uh, atmosphere oxygen level after plants evolved uh, increased dramatically bring it up to the present day with about 21% of the atmosphere being oxygen. What gave rise to uh, this first oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere was photosynthetic microbes, such as cyanobacteria, which engaged in aerobic respiration. We'll talk about that later in the term, aerobic respiration but it made oxygen as a byproduct. And then oxygen was released and that released oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere. Oops, let's go back. If we look at the present level of oxygen in the planet atmosphere, it's about 21%, only about half of that oxygen comes from green plants. The other half of that 21% comes from microbes. Once again, microbes are extremely important to the planet Earth in making not only the 21% oxygen, but actually it was microbes that first made oxygen available to the Earth's atmosphere, which then allowed for the evolution of green plants. And we're not going to talk much about that, but before oxygen being in the Earth's atmosphere, you could not have life on land because of UV light. And with the um, addition of oxygen to the atmosphere, we had uh, the formation of ozone, and then ozone prevented UV light from uh, coming to the surface of the earth and then killing uh, the plants. 
Any question about any of that? The point is, is that once again, microbes are extremely important to the earth. Here we have a sewage treatment plant where humans generate the waste when they wash stuff down their sinks and flush their toilets. And humans obviously uh, degrade the waste. That's why we have this structure here, right? Anyone disagree? Humans degrade the waste? Nobody's disagreeing? Well, you should disagree. Humans only built the structure. It's actually the microbes which are degrading the organic waste in this sewage treatment plant. So humans only built the structure, but we use the microbes to degrade the organic matter in this sewage treatment plant. Once again, microorganisms are extremely important to the planet Earth. Otherwise, what will we do with all the water we flush down the toilet, right? Uh, we talked about microbes and microorganisms. We're going to use these two words synonymously. Something that's too small to be seen with the unaided eye. I will tend to use the word microorganism to mean a cellular organism. And then a microbe is both a microorganism, meaning a cellular organism, and uh, something that is acellular. So by a, micro, a microbe, we mean bacteria, archaea, yeast, molds, protozoans, some algae that are microscopic, and then viruses and prions. You should realize that viruses and prions are special because these are not cellular life forms. In fact, they're debatable whether they're, uh, viruses are even alive. We're not getting to get into that argument. But they are special because they are not organisms. They do not have cells. A prion is really only a, a protein molecule. But we do call them microbes, and they're not an organism. So I won't use the term microorganism to discuss a viruses and a prion. However, other authors will use microorganism and microbe synonymously. So they'll say a virus is a microorganism. Microorganisms are almost everywhere. So we say that they are ubiquitous. There is the ubiquity of microorganisms almost everywhere on the planet Earth. They play beneficial roles in numerous processes. We talked about a few earlier. And microorganisms are numerically the most abundant life forms on the planet Earth. I briefly discussed a cell. Let's go back and talk. What is a cell? A cell is the basic structural and functional unit of all organisms. A cell is a highly organized compartment bounded by a thin, flexible structure that we call either the plasma membrane or the cell membrane. Those two terms are used synonymously. All cells contain three components. They all have a cell membrane, they all have cytoplasm, and they all have DNA. Any question about a cell? Here, we're looking at a bacterial cell here. All right, any questions on anything? If there's no questions, I think I'm going to stop here, and we'll resume at 6.30 for the lab. All right, I'm not hearing any questions, so I'll see you at 6.30. As I mentioned, uh, if you have a chat question, you should ask it. You did, never mind. All right, I'll see you at 6.30.